All right. Uh, I guess I'm going to talk about uh, a question that uh, uh, I've been thinking about uh, since I got here. So, uh, <coughs> I mean, it's about Riemann surface. And uh, now, I guess the question is, uh, uh, well, I mean, there's a couple questions. One, uh, I mean, how can you identify a conformality? Of, I mean, giving two Riemann surface, uh, how can you tell um, uh, one is conformal to the other? I mean, to identify the conformality of it. And the other one is a very classical example, uh, a problem, which I will try to state it and then uh, uh, see some idea of, uh, uh, of trying to attack that problem. Uh, all right, uh, I guess before I can uh, properly state uh, the thing, uh, let me like give basic uh, like uh, definitions, and then I'll state the problem, and then I'll state uh, something that I know, and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay. <coughs> All right. Uh, I guess I'm gonna first try to define Shaki group, which everybody is supposed to know here. Uh, so here's the Shaki group. So I'll take a free group. Uh, this is a, a free group. And then uh, you consider uh, asym uh, quasi asymmetric embedding. Uh, <clears throat> well, in general, what you have is that if you have like a work hyperbolic group, uh, like say, uh, 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 let's say torsion free. And then uh, we can consider, uh, for instance, uh, uh, representations. And uh, now, so this is a discrete. Uh, faithful. And now. So what we say is that a quasi metric, uh, quasi isometric embedding is that with respect to the work length. Okay. So what you have here is that. Uh, uh, so so you consider the orbit map, for instance. Okay. And then what you have is that. Uh, uh, So that's called a quasi asymmetric uh, embedding. Uh, I mean, that's a quasi asymmetry, by the way. And so, so, uh, so quasi asymmetric embedding will give us uh, uh, what's called a, a convex co compact group. OK. Uh, so this is a. Uh, Convex co compact representation. And so if I take uh, uh, a free group of convex co compact, and that's Shaki group. Okay? 
Any questions? Okay. What is it? Uh, just orbit map. That's uh, that's uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and uh, so that's uh, that, that's uh, a definition of uh, a Shaky group. Now, I mean, just by uh, hyperbolic geometry, uh, you get this uh, concrete uh, representation of uh, this uh, uh, Shaky group uh, by, for instance, it would be generated by a. Uh, Uh, by uh, uh, G generators, and uh, um, uh, this G generators, so this, so it's given by G generators, and this G generators, I mean, that's pretty easy uh, to, uh, to, uh, to realize that. This is a, a purely luxuromic. Just simple classification. Uh, so this is purely luxuromic. And uh, now you use uh, pimple, lemon, stuff like that. So what you get is that you get a disjoint uh, uh, Jordan curves, uh, which maps uh, one onto the other and interior to the exterior, and that's what you get, I mean, in hyperbolic space. So, Okay, so that will give us uh, a, a concrete uh, description of uh, a Shaky group in hyperbolic three space. <coughs> and by the way, uh, I'm taking this. Uh, well, this is the uh, upper half space, so uh, the boundary is just. So this whole thing is laying in the C. Okay, so all the curves. Uh, belong to uh, C. Okay. All right. Uh, that's that's Chucky group. I mean, okay. Uh, I mean, uh, I just want to give you guys like a, a basic definition here, and uh, uh, I'm not gonna go too deep of uh, I mean uh, any other things. So I can state the problem and, and, and problem related to it. Uh, so what's the use of a Shaky group here uh, in <coughs> in this talk is that A actually unimizes a Riemann surface. Okay. So I mean, uh, <coughs> it's not hard to uh, uh, to see that uh, how you uniformize a Riemann surface with a Shaky group. Uh, I mean, for a torus, it's very easy. I mean, you just cut along uh, the curve, and you, you, you get two uh, uh, two uh, two curves. You cut open, you get a, a cylinder, right, and which is conformal to uh, uh, what is it, uh, uh, annulus. And then uh, you can have uh, what's called lux with uh, with a center and, and to infinity, which maps in and out from that interior to exterior, and that's what gives you. Uh, the, the, uh, the 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 shaky cover of uh, a shaky uh, of a Riemann surface of genus one, and for genus uh, uh, bigger than one, uh, you get uh, shaky cover as well. It just uh, takes a little bit work, and uh, <coughs> uh, so I'll, let me try to describe to you uh, what uh, this thing looked like. <coughs> So this is a Shaky group, and uh, all right. 
So let me, uh, so this is a Riemann surface. All right, uh, so what you do is that uh, So you take a uh, for generators. And uh, <coughs> uh, and what you do is that uh, what uh, so you cut open. So, for instance, this is a planar. So what you do is that you cut open this uh, uh, collection of uh, uh, curves. Then what you have is uh, uh, just a, uh, a sphere with, uh, 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 with G holes on it. And, uh, and that's a planar, conformal to a planar uh, domain with, uh, with, uh, uh, with G uh, boundaries. OK? Sorry, uh, I, I should say 2G boundaries. Okay. So, so you have 2G uh, 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 holes on a, a remiss of here. All right, uh, so, so w f from this, I mean, you take a just, I'm here, okay, I'm giving you a pretty rough description of what's going on, okay? So from here, you take like, uh, say, all possible copies. So, so let me <coughs> say take a free group, uh, okay, on G generators, and so, so for, for, for each work in this free group, you attach, you take a copy of uh, x, a copy of x. <coughs> and then uh, you consider all the collections. Let me see, put that, uni. And then you uh, you glue them you glue them uh, together. <coughs> the way you're gonna glue them together is that uh, by words. So uh, let me get this uh, let me get this clear. <coughs> so if uh, if gamma okay, uh, see gamma and gamma prime belong to this and. Uh, they're related by, say, uh, a word uh, C, a G, OK? Uh, let's see, OK, now. <clears throat> Let me not use C. So let's see a word. And then uh, okay, so uh, suppose uh, choosing uh, two words and they're related uh, by uh, a transformation of uh, a generator, uh, attaching a generator. And so what you do is that you do the obvious thing: you attach the, uh, uh, a copy of uh, uh, these two with, uh, I mean, th this is, uh, by the way, this is giving my circles here on, on the Shaky group, if you want to uh, call that. So there's 2G of those circles, OK, bounded by those curves. Those are Jordan curves uh, on the Riemann uh, uh, plane here, uh, on, a, on C plane. <coughs> 
So what you do is that you attach them together. So this is attached to a, a, a identify uh, to, for instance, uh, let me put this way. C is equivalent to C prime if there's transformation of uh, CI uh, into CI prime. And then uh, uh, the copy with the word uh, related is attached to the copy of the Jordan curve. Is that clear? I mean, pictorial is pretty clear. I'm just writing down the, uh, is that pretty clear? Any questions? Good, I mean, that's good. No question, that means really clear. <laughs> okay, I mean, it's not hard to imagine, so uh, I'll just. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I'm uh, trying to tell you that uh, Riemann surface can be uh, uh, can be covered by a Shaki group. Right, exactly. Yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, the other way is uh, is clear. Okay, this actually requires a little uh, uh, work. Uh, even though I'm giving you a pretty rough uh, outline of uh, how you build this ribbon surface, but the, uh, the main point is that uh, this action has to be holomorphic eventually and extends to the whole, whole, uh, whole plane. And that's the part which actually re requires some, uh, some argument. <coughs> but it's not, it's not that hard. Uh, so so you, get a, uh, you, get a, you get what's called a, a a planar domain, okay? There's a, uh, and you just attach uh, through this, uh, <coughs> those uh, uh, boundaries circles, you attach them, so you get a, 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 a eventually a planar domain. So, so I'll call this omega, okay? This is a planar domain, okay? <coughs> Now there's uh, there's action by this group which is given by that and the action is given by that so let me call this action say by on this uh, by Shaki group. Now when I say Shaki, that means I already claim that uh, this uh, this action can be extended to the whole plane. Okay, so com uh, holomorphically. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so what you have is that this model is the Riemann surface. Okay. Any questions? That's. I mean, this is just a very. Uh, 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 it's pretty. It's pretty clear to uh, to to see it. So what essentially is that uh, a Riemann surface can be uh, can be covered by a, a Shaki group, and we know that Shaki group of course covers Riemann surface as well. <coughs> now, you see that uh, what I did over there is that you, you actually uh, cut up those those uh, curves to obtain your uh, this. Uh, region, a planar a domain, which is a hyperbolic uh, planar domain, and by the way, <coughs> and uh, <coughs> I should drink more water before I talk. I forgot to do that. <coughs> so, uh, uh, see, and oh, the fundamental group, I'm, I mean, <coughs> uh, you see, so the Shaki space, let me uh, define the Shaki space here. <coughs> a Shaki space is given by 
all collections. So a Shaky space of uh, of genus G is given by a collection of uh, uh, Mobius transformations that generates a Shaky group. Uh, so generates a Shaky group. Group, and uh, uh, I'll just take a, a conjugate equivalency as well. <coughs> okay, so I'll take that as a, a Shaky space. Now, this space actually is, I mean, it's very easy for you to realize that uh, this space is uh, of dimension. Uh, Uh, 3G minus 3. I mean, that's pretty clear too, right? <coughs> you just normalize it, and then uh, you get that uh, many of uh, variables, pretty much. Well, thanks very much. <laughs> I feel honored. Thank you. All right, uh, so what we have is that uh, we have a Shaky space, and now I'm trying a touch Miller, a touch -Miller space <coughs> actually covers a Shaky uh, space. Let me describe, uh, tell you how, how this covers. And so, and this, the moduli <laughs> space, Everybody knows, cover, uh, I mean, touch mirror is universal cover of a moduli space. Now, this actually is universal cover as well of a Shaky group, a uh, Shaky space, and this is universal cover. And this is given by, uh, uh, which everyone knows, is given by uh, uh, the, the mapping class group. Okay. Now, so what is this here? And uh, well, <coughs> if you look at this construction uh, <coughs> construction up there, what you do is that uh, you map your mapping. Uh, see, generator alpha. This into a shaky group. This into a trivial group. Actually. Uh, let me uh, write this way, uh, the deck transformation of uh, so I'll call this map and uh, this is of course the Shaky group Uh, <coughs> is this clear? Okay. So what you have is that this, uh, by the way, is called a symplectic morphism, symplectic homomorphism. Okay. And so this is exactly given by this map, and which here is given by a group, a mapping class group depends on this map, okay, which is subgroup of a mapping class group of G. What is it? No, uh, beta is the one that gives me uh, the circles, right? It, it's the. It, it, it. Yeah, I, I'm cut, cut, cut open the be uh, betas. So you. Yeah. No, I'm not filling in the handle body. No, I know, but some, well, somehow. Uh, 
Uh, so you have your original shot sequence, which is realized as a phase four. Right. Three subgroup of SLP ESS2s. <coughs> so you have H divided by gamma is a <coughs> finite topological type Riemann surface of infinite volume. Right. I mean, yes, that's right. I mean, here, what you, what you did is that you, you I mean, you take out, all, you cut over, open those curves, and what you have is just, uh, 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 you have a yeah, you have those boundaries. You have G, two uh, G boundaries, right. linear domain, right? And then uh, you just attaching those domains, which I mean, it's like a, as a deck transformation, right? Uh, as a deck transformation, uh, you attaching all this, so you have a a a, 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 a whole family of uh, those uh, planar domain attached to each other, each other. <coughs> And actually, on the uh, final planar attached planar domain is given by this Shack group. So what you did is that uh, you trivialize uh, the uh, uh, the other curves, the alphas, okay? And those uh, the, so the, the boundaries are attached through the betas. <coughs> Does that make sense? So you're taking the covering space where the of the group generated by the base. The normal subgroup, yeah. yeah. This is the kernel. I mean, uh, it's is uh, what is uh, uh, I mean the kernel, right? <coughs> uh, let me write this. I mean, that's the Shaki group, right? Is there a way of doing this as a beta that should be trivial because you're killing the betas? No, I'm not killing the betas. I'm killing the alphas. The betas correspond to your circles over there. Yeah. So the betas are trivial. The alphas are the, the, gam the relative gammas that identify the circles. No, I mean, uh, the, the, uh, okay, my beta is the circles, right? It's the circles. Right. Right. And now those circles are being identified by the alpha eyes. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, uh, <laughs> well. Uh, Right. Which is the which is the one the Kleinian group. Yes, it's the Shack. The eyes are trivial because they bound disks to your Kleinian group. The boundaries of your planar domain. The boundary of my planar domain. Uh, I mean, I mean, they don't bound the disk. That's the thing. They bound a disk in hyperbolic space. Yeah, hyperbolic space. Yeah, when you map the planar domain to Yeah, yeah, hy hyperbolic space. Uh, I mean, I mean, uh, you see, the thing is that I, I'm looking through the, the deck transformation here. Right. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, through. True or false? Is this group the group that generated the normal closure of the beta i? Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, this kernel is the. <coughs> uh, <coughs> It's it, it's alpha eyes. Uh, I mean, it's the normal closure of it. Anyway, um, uh, let's. Uh, I mean, the the main point is that uh, this subgroup here <coughs> give us a. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, right, I mean, uh, this subgroup here gives us uh, uh, an infinite number of covers. So,
infinite index infinite group. So what happened here is that uh, doesn't matter which we trivialize alpha or beta. What we have is that uh, we have an infinite index subgroup of this, which is uh, uh, <coughs> which is give us a, a another cover of uh, moduli space by uh, infinite index. I mean, there's infinite number of covers of it. That's that's the thing. So you have infinite number of covers of the moduli space now. This map here is easy. All you have to do is just forget about uh, your markings on the modular space. <coughs> Depends on what? It means this phi. Phi. Uh, should I say psi? Yeah, it depends on psi. But uh, it doesn't really depend on psi. I mean, they're, they're conjugate uh, if you change uh, different markings. <coughs> so I mean, uh, there's infinite number of markings that you can make, and uh, which will give you a different, uh, a different uh, subgroup, which are conjugate to each other. Uh, <coughs> now. So what you have is that you have uh, uh, <coughs> an infinite cover of uh, the moduli space. So <coughs> I think uh, the question is, like, a point on the moduli space, can you identify through uh, uh, points in the Schacke space? I guess that's the question. <coughs> All right, uh, so I guess I'm pretty uh, uh, pretty okay to uh, state the problem, except <coughs> so the question is that uh, <coughs> so giving a point. So let me make that uh, precise. <coughs> now, if there's infinite number of covers, for instance, uh, so if I were just, uh, 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 let's see, <coughs> I'll denote a map like that. And so, so, uh, Take a point. Uh, let's see. Uh, let me just use a uh, surface. No. Uh, I'll take theta. And uh, so we'll consider. And uh, now, this we know is. Uh, is covered by uh, a, a, sh a point in, in a shaky uh, space. <coughs> so, so every element is given by <coughs> By some uh, uh, shaky cover. So now, if I were to take, for instance, the Hausdorff uh, dimension of all these possible shaky covers, so dimension of the limit set. Up. <coughs> mm. 
Now, So does it identify the uh, conformality of a Riemann surface? Now I'll give you some idea of this, <coughs> just a little bit. There's a classical con conjecture. Uh, let me get this right. <coughs> Yeah. Uh, right. I mean, there's uh, there's infinite number of ways uh, which we just uh, see. There's infinite number of ways, but uh, taking different uh, kernels, okay. And so you have infinite in in equivalent way of uh, realizing uh, a Riemann surface, which means that the group are not conjugate to each other. The Schachter group are not conjugate to each other, but they realize the same Riemann surface. <coughs> now, the point is that uh, if you take all possible, so you take a point in this sh the Schachter space, and you take a Hausdorff dimension of all the points in this Schachter space, which is given by the inverse of a point in the moduli space, <coughs> does that identify your conformal structure? Yes, that's right. What kind of set is that? Uh, that's uh, that's, uh, uh, that's uh, a number from 0 to 2. That's a set? You yes. You're taking the, set of the, the subset of that? It's discrete. It's discrete subset. It is? It is, of course. Yeah, I don't yeah, it has to, I mean, it is discrete. I mean, just this infinite, <laughs> yeah, it's discrete. I mean, it's. Um, Sorry, do you, do you really mean conformally? Because, like, the thing on the right looks like, like big dimensional, and the thing on the left looks discrete. Um, so he's looking at a particular fiber. Or yeah. I'm <coughs> well, I'm taking all possible uh, Hausdorff dimensions here, but okay? Yeah. They may have limit points. Yeah, they, they, they might have a limit points. Yes. I mean, it actually, uh, if I were to say it might be even be dense. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, oh, I mean, okay, oh, um, uh, I didn't see the, the, the set is. <coughs> I'm not saying that uh, this thing is, uh, is discrete. Yeah, 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 countable, yes. <laughs> That's right. Yes, countable. <laughs> countable, yes. I, I, <coughs> That's good. Yeah, the, uh, that's what I'm, okay. That's what I'm trying to, to say. Yeah, it's countable set. The countable set hmm. might determine or does. Now, is that a, a statement that's true or conjectural? Uh, no, it's, it's something that uh, uh, I have uh, no idea yet. It's a question mark, yes. Yes, question mark. Is that now or wow? <laughs> now. <laughs> it's not something you know that's true. No, uh, I don't know that's true yet. Uh, but <clears throat> like I said, I'm going to give you some uh, idea of, uh, of uh, what's going on here. <clears throat> so are we clear on this point now? So what's the, what's the equivalence relation on the right hand side? Conformal. conformal. Yeah, so uh, points in modular. That's a set of Hausdorff dimensions, which you, you said the countable set right. of all realizations. Of uh, Schachter cover. Determine the, 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 the Riemann surface, yeah. yes. Okay, is this a standard, is this your question or is this a standard question? Oh, I should say that uh, this is a, a question that uh, I'm working with uh, Jim Anderson. Uh, actually, it's a joint work uh, so far, yeah. That's, that's the question. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm going to get to that. That's, that's exactly it. I mean, this question is something that uh, we're trying to ask. Uh, I mean, if it's true, of course, obviously, it would imply Bear's question. Uh, that's obviously. <coughs> yeah, countable. I mean, <laughs> that's good. I mean, uh, <coughs> I mean, sometimes you, you, you speak one thing, but you think uh, different things. Uh, does that happen often to you guys? I mean, and even. The point that is to shut up. You open your mouth again. That's that's the thing. I mean, even you teach a calculus course. Sometimes you write one thing and then uh, you say something else. Uh, uh, your mind is not working properly. <coughs> All right. Uh, so let me let me give you. Uh, <coughs> Where is it? So the faster it is, if you make them like the circles a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, does that change the component? What is it? Your shock is over there. Right. On the left, the joke picture. Right. So if you just change the circles a little bit. Right. Or just change the rotation. Or does that change the conformal structure? Uh, well, I mean, uh, if you put a, a rotation, it will change conformal structure, right? Uh, the the circles, I mean, Mobius transformation, yeah. obvious yeah. not. Well, just you know, fix C1, but change C1 prime. Okay. <coughs> I mean, I'm just, just confused. Just the dimension. Yeah. The thing on the right seems to be changing. The the thing on the left is coming. Yeah. Let me just write this up first. Uh, what is it? OK, this is the question. Uh, <coughs> Bear uh, asks. Uh, so I mean, the only, uh, the only uh, uh, literature that I can go back for you guys is uh, uh, in, a, uh, in, a, in a paper by our Bernie Maskett uh, in 95, uh, uh, published in uh, this curriculum uh, special edition, uh, Lipis Legacy. Uh, by Linda King and some other uh, people as well. So every closed somehow uh, my page is missing for this. <coughs> closed Riemann service is by classical. Group. So this is a, a known conjecture. Uh, <coughs> so it says that uh, every closed Riemann surface, and by the way, everything I, uh, I did over here is closed Riemann surface. Okay, <coughs> every closed Riemann surface is uniformized by uh, a classical Shaky group, which means that uh, I can uh, have my surface written as <coughs> for gamma classical. Now, I haven't really uh, tell you what the classical is, but I think uh, most people will know. Yeah, exactly. So classical, and uh, here I just say uh, shaky. Shaky just means uh, any uh, closed curve, Jordan curves. Uh, classical just uh, uh, actually pick out a subset of that, which is, uh, means that you can actually pick out uh, uh, generating circles rather than just arbitrary uh, uh, 
drilling curves for your group, and that's it. You know, of course, I mean, uh, <clears throat> that's, uh, this is an a, a old question. <clears throat> now, uh, let's see. <clears throat> How I, uh, uh, let me, uh, If you could, yeah. <clears throat> no, 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 no. Hold on a second. Yeah, no, I'm missing yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, <clears throat> it can be rim, uh, <coughs> uniformized by a Shaki group, which means, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, even you take an option. I mean, it can. So it, what it says is Obviously that. There may be another group. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's the thing. I mean, right. yeah. <clears throat> I mean, if I can, is there some statement that not every Schottky group is classic? Go ahead. Like what is it? Isn't there some statement? <laughs> That's right. How many of you are? <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm actually leaving the room. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> so yes, there are there non-classical shock groups? Yeah, there are. I mean, there are. There's plenty of non-classical shock groups. I mean, uh, if you take uh, household dimension close enough to two, it won't be classical anymore. Okay. Now. <clears throat> But what, what I prove is that if you take household dimension sufficiently close to zero, then it will be classical. Now, the point is that uh, uh, here's the thing. <clears throat> Can you believe it? I, I mean, uh <clears throat> I'll prepare some notes and then uh, lose some pages as well. All right, so take H to be a handle body. Okay, so everybody know what handle body is. Okay, so that's uh, pretty clear. <coughs> and uh, so let me define. Uh, So if I take a handle body and uh, I consider the uh, soup of injective radius of uh, uh, <coughs> of uh, all the handle body that's bounded by this bounded by this rim surface, okay? So I take a, I mean. Uh, <coughs> There's an infinite number of them, okay? It's just different markings on a handle body gives me different uh, uh, <coughs> uh, different way of attaching a, a, a handle body into, uh, on a rim surface. <coughs> now, <coughs> so let me. Uh, uh, Yeah, hyperbolic. Everything's hyperbolic here. Yeah, hyperbolic handle body. Yes. Um, yeah, that's right. Everything's hyperbolic. I mean, it has to be. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so. So let me uh, put this as a definition first, and then uh, I'll see. Uh, 
Allez. <coughs> All right, uh, <clears throat> I hope I can make that clearer for you guys uh, because I lost the page I, ex uh, I wrote it down properly. <clears throat> is, this K, is K independent of G here? Yes, it is independent of G, yes. Uh, so is it clear or is it not? So what it says is that uh, now <clears throat> there exists a, 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 a number, so uh, if a handle body has a uh, uh, sufficiently large injective radius, then uh, the fundamental group is classical Schachter group. And uh, in particular, it says that uh, if I can uh, bound a uh, handle body, uh, actually, uh, I can f find a handle body attached to this Riemann surface, okay, s so, uh, s with that uh, large enough injective radius. So, which means that if this number is sufficiently big, then my, uh, uh, my lower bound, then it will be minimized by a classical Shaker group. Does that make sense? I hope I can make that clear to you. Does that make sense? OK? <coughs> now, so it's, it, it tells you that the household dimension is a way, at least, to attack this problem. OK? At least, uh, uh, at least the way. Uh, uh, I can try to uh, uh, see uh, how this thing goes. Does that make sense? <clears throat> so uh, <clears throat> now the question, of course, is that this number is not easily computed. OK? Uh, <clears throat> is this your theorem? Yeah. I mean, joint work with Anderson. Yeah. <clears throat> now, I mean, I mean, uh, this thing here, I mean, uh, if you think about it, <clears throat> I mean, I was originally hoping that, OK, is there any way that uh, you can attach handle body with increasingly arbitrarily large injective radius? <clears throat> that would be nice. <laughs> then uh, I just don't have to compute anything. And then I eventually just say, OK, there you go. I got it. Because there's infinite number of them. OK, so maybe I can be lucky and just, just find one that's big enough. That makes sense? <coughs> I mean, if you just start with any handle body. Yeah. And then, like, use, like, uh, like residual finance. Can you take some finite cover? And no, it? no, you can't. That's the thing. I mean, you have Oh, sorry, the, the, the uniform. It, it's not yeah, the yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's uniform. Right. <coughs> uh, <coughs> hmm. I need more water. That's the thing. <coughs> Uh, now, <clears throat> the thing is that so I was. What's the, sorry, what's the relation with the Hausdorff dimension? So, if the Hausdorff dimension is small enough, then you're saying that the injective radius is large? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
<coughs> now, I mean, uh, this, uh, I mean, the difficulty now. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> I only have the brightest people uh, give me the waters. We just, we just uh, feel we're on it. <coughs> uh, <coughs> now, and of course, you're sitting here, uh, sorry, I mean, <laughs> and Dave. <coughs> And you, all you guys, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, let me just give you an idea of this. I mean, I try to uh, actually uh, compute this. I mean, not to compute it, but try to estimate it. Can I actually get it? Now, <clears throat> it seems that uh, I may not able to get arbitrarily large, because I've, uh, <clears throat> I think I can find some kind of rough upper bound on this based on the injectivity of the Riemann surface. Yeah. <clears throat> it's not a precise bound, but I think there is a uh, exists of an upper bound that you can actually uh, get on that. But what I'm interested in is that what's the, I mean, what's the maximum? I mean, it, that, that's not end of it because I mean this number can be pretty huge, right? I mean, compared to what I have over here, even though I, ha I haven't given you. Thanks very much. <clears throat> I mean, there is a <coughs> there's a machine a machinery <coughs> and Yarminsky and a whole bunch of other people trying to, I mean, when they work on this uh, Indian lamination uh, uh, theory, they're trying to build a, a, a model for this handle body, which they are trying to estimate the uh, injective radius and get a uniform lower bound. So we know there's some kind of uniform lower bound. That's not a problem, but uh, they haven't computed anything explicit for me to. Uh, to be uh, uh, able to conclude anything, <clears throat> but the thing is that I think this thing can you can get this pretty large if you take uh, like say genus high enough, like large enough genus, then you can get this thing pretty large. I mean that's I think one thing you can try to uh, get that. So yeah, I'm <clears throat> not for arbitrary. I mean uh, if you. Fix your rim and surface. Uh, I think I can pretty much uh, put an upper bound on it. Oh yeah, it will go to infinity, definitely. Right, it will. Yes, it will go to infinity. But only as the genus increases. Huh? Only as the genus increases. Yeah, as genus increases. Uh, yeah, you get. Or you can pinch uh, uh, curves on the rim and surface and still get a, a, a very large handle bodies. In, in, uh, radius handle body, uh, injected radius. So which means that if I have a curve on the rim surface uh, are sufficiently small, then I, I can get a very large injectivity inside the handle body. <coughs> yeah. So I mean, uh, for s s I mean, uh, if if for instance, if I can uh, uh, like uh, inject a, uh, put a uh, put a put a short curves on the rim surface, which we increase my injectivity. Eventually, it will go to infinity. If I just put uh, squeeze uh, hard enough, then yes, and then uh, it will be uniformized by a classical Shaker group. But that's uh, that's oh, I hope. Uh, I mean, that's that just covers some of it. I mean, uh, I mean, there's a lot. Uh, there's there's plenty of uh, that uh, that uh, that there's no way unless I can get somehow a uh, uh, compute this. Uh, some way of uh, get this uh, thing. I mean, this is a, a sort of like a, almost like a discrete uh, 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 perturbation theory, if you wish. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, there's countable number of ways of doing things. <coughs> so uh, uh, then uh, I, I, you can't uh, uh, cover everything. Sorry. Yeah, but it, that's not what you can do, right? I mean, yeah. I mean you're changing your rim and surface, right? You're starting with. I mean, this is a, a giving rim and surface. I'm not doing the other way. I mean, okay, I'm. But if your if your <coughs> case is independent of genus. Yeah. Then does this is say that this bare conjecture is virtually true? No. No, it's not. So, wait, so are you saying that if you 
that were some particular antibodies, Andy. Yeah. You take some big cover, you make sure you say it is large. Yeah, right. In particular, you make it bigger than whatever K That's right there. That's right. And so you're saying that any shock you do is virtually shocky? It's virtually shocky. Virtually yeah. classically shocky. Yes. I mean, is that? <coughs> what is it? I mean, I, you mean, uh, No, I mean you can you can increase the injectivity by taking covers. Of course, that's 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 not an issue here. But you can't do it uniformly because you can have up to a small mixture that is covered. But it's not geometrically finite, right? Mm -hmm. uh, aren't these going to be geometrically finite antibodies? Sure. But you just take a take a figure generated by a very short translation of something else. So you can erase this thing to go to zero. Oh. I but did, I fixed initial antibody, there, there will be yeah. convex circle factors like that. Yes. The length spectrum is still discrete. Right? <coughs> you can still, you can make the injectivity radius large, and when you get to zero. I mean, I try to. Really I mean, I try to uh, think about this, uh, uh, taking covers. To be honest, and but uh, I mean, it it doesn't work. It taking covers. I mean. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I try to do that because uh, I try different ways of uh, saying that I can uh, uh, get this. I mean, all right. Uh, uh, Why is it related? Oh, you mean this conjecture? Oh, this one here. Yeah, there is. Uh, <coughs> now the thing is that I think you can. Uh, Uniformize a Riemann surface with arbitrarily small Hausdorff dimension. Okay, now if you can, uh, uh, I mean, you can do it with arbitrarily large as well, and you can do a arbitrarily small. Uh, well, <coughs> I think that the Hausdorff dimension should be dense between zero and two. two. It, I mean, the, the whole spectrum I'm talking about, the countable spectrum, should be dense. And uh, now, <coughs> uh, having that, uh, I mean, uh, honestly, I, I, I don't have a proof of what's true, but it's almo almost like uh, uh, intuition. Then I think uh, that pretty much will capture everything there is need to be uh, uh, on a rim surface. That's what I think. I mean. Uh, so <coughs> this is much harder to uh, to prove than this. I mean, yeah, it it, it will be. It, it is a very hard. I, I mean, uh, I mean this. I mean, uh, <coughs> I mean having this, we're pretty much saying that the uh, the spectrum will be dense from zero to two. Okay. I mean then. Uh, uh, and then that pretty much implies this uh, Bayer's conjecture. I mean, Sorry. I mean this is much. Yeah, go ahead. <coughs> boundary H. Did you mean like the convex score? Boundary of the convex score? Is it no, it's just conformal boundary. boundary. Conformal boundary. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> All right. I'll, I'll stop here. I mean, there's uh, uh, definitely a lot more. Uh, questions that uh, I can uh, provide answer for at this point. So uh, <clears throat> yeah.